The birds in these huge flocks are mainly knots and they're a, a medium sized uh, wading bird and they're fantastic little birds actually. They're uh, a migratory species and they migrate over huge distances. So the knots breed in the Arctic Circle during the summer months and then they spend the winter on uh, estuaries in Europe. And uh, as I say, here we're at the uh, the Wash, which is a huge estuary um, on the Norfolk uh, Lincolnshire coast. And um, they're, one of the reasons I like them so much actually is they're grey on the top and they're, they're much lighter underneath, so almost white on the underparts, underparts of their bodies and wings, which means when they turn you get this literally shimmering effect uh, from sort of the grey to the white, and it's, it's an unbelievable spectacle. I mean, I really like watching um, the starlings, starling mermations, and that's where you get huge numbers of starlings uh, flocking like this and making these patterns in the sky. But with the knots, because they've got these different colours, you know, the lighter underside of the wings and body, as they turn, yeah, the, you know, that shimmering effect is just absolutely brilliant. Um, and um, they spend the winter in, uh, in the UK and other European destinations, Ireland as well. And then uh, during the summer they'll go back and uh, breed up in the Arctic Circuit again. So yeah, fantastic little waders. And what a morning's photography uh, I'm having. It's, it's just an absolutely fantastic uh, winter spectacle. And the numbers build up um, from... They, they start migrating into the UK um, the end of the summer really. And they build up sort of early during the autumn. In, and then the numbers peak in the winter. So it's a real winter um, spectacle really. Morning guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm at a fantastic place called Snettisham on the Norfolk coast and it's a really brilliant place for waders. There's uh, in the winter around about 100,000 knots or more gather here. You've got oyster catchers, there's avocets, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, I've arrived here on one of the um, few times in the year when we've got a really really high tide and that's a great time to come here because it's, it's a wildlife spectacular. Um, and if you get here at high tide, what happens is all the waders get lifted off, off the mud and they fly up and you create, the, and create these mermations and it's an it's, it's unbelievable experience. There was 100,000 plus waders in the sky and um, they, as I say, they create a mermation, so it's patterns in the sky and you can hear the waders coming across now, there's constant movement. Um, as I say, there's only um, a limited uh, number of times a year when the tide is high enough to push all the waders off the mud flats because most of the time they're feeding sort of over there. And you can see, I don't know if you can, you can see in the background, but we've got uh, knots and there's oyster catches in the background feeding now because the tide's dropping. So yeah, I, I got up at 2 a.m. this morning, super early. Uh, got here at 6 a.m. and it's about half an hour walk onto the, uh, the shore here. And uh, I'm, I got here ready for that high tide and you just wait for the super high tide then all the waders lift up and it's a fantastic photo opportunity. I've got some great stills, I've got some great video footage and uh, I'm, I think I prefer the video footage because you've got all this movement around the sky. And I've shot a um, normal uh, frame rate of 25 frames a second so uh, it's a natural sort of video speed. I've shot a 60 frames a second and I've shot a 120 frames a second. And at the 120 frames a second that's slow motion and that should look great. Uh, when it comes to the stills, um, I was using um, my 200-500mm to zoom because I wanted various framing options and filming options. Um, I was shooting a 500th of, 500 of a second for the stills. Uh, aperture was wide open because the light levels were really low to start with, so my ISO was quite high. I think about 3200. Uh, when I first started, probably 6400. But it's all good. Uh, it's around about, I think, 10 o'clock now, and the tide's dropping, so I'm going to uh, head back down the beach, uh, get to the car park, and have a cup of tea, because it's a bit nippy this morning. And as I say, early start, so, um, you know, starting to feel a bit tired as well, but absolutely worth getting up early. I can't tell you what a great wildlife spectacular this is. It's a real spectacle. It's probably one of the best wildlife spectacles we've got in the UK. Uh, and as I say, I've got some great footage, I think, and I've got some... Um, I've got some great uh, stills. You can hear the waders coming across all the time. It's brilliant. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm not going to talk for too much longer because uh, I want to go and have a cup of tea. So, and it's going to be all about the video footage and the stills. So if you, have, if you do enjoy uh, the video and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that would be great. And if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and uh, you'll be notified when I upload my next video. 
And last but not least, if you like the video, if you can give it a thumbs up, a like, that always helps my channel. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, and uh, I'll say bye for now and I'll speak to you on my next one. So yeah, bye for now guys. Hi guys, um, I just wanted to explain uh, what I did for the rest of the day. So as you've already seen, um, in the morning we had these fantastic mermations, over 100,000 uh, waders up in the sky, making patterns in the sky, and it was absolutely superb. Now once the tide was fully in, the waders then fly over to a lagoon, or a couple of lagoons, and there's some little islands, and they all sort of sit on the islands and wait for the tide to drop again, so they can go out and feed on the mudflats. So um, I went over to the, the hides, there's a couple of hides there by the lagoon and it was really busy but waited patiently and got into the hide and got some nice shots of the waves all packed tightly together on these little islands. So that was great and I've already put those pictures up in this video. So after that it was a case of back to the car park for a quick tea break, tea and chocolate and uh, get a little bit of energy back again because as I said I've been up early and then I went back to the, uh, the shoreline because by that time that high tide are beginning to recede and uh, the, uh, the waders then fly off the from the little lagoons, the little islands, and then go back onto the mudflats. And because the tide had only gone out a little bit by then, they're quite close to the shore. And I crept down onto the shoreline, absolutely didn't disturb the waders at all, and got some really nice shots of the knots, so these small wading birds um, feeding them in the mud. The light was fantastic, there was absolutely beautiful reflections, and I was really pleased with those. And then I got some oyster catches as well, uh, slightly further out. So that was great, second uh, photography session in the bag, and, and I'll put those pictures uh, and that footage after this little piece of camera. And then went back for lunch, and then last, by that time, it was around about, uh, probably about two o'clock, so I was feeling dead knackered actually, but I felt the light was still really good. So I wandered right the way back onto the shoreline again for the last sort of bit of photography. And by that time, the light is, um, or the sun has moved position, so any of the birds are backlit. But that was okay. Um, and the tide by then is also really a long way out. So there wasn't so many birds around, but what I did get is some great shots of a curlew backlit. So all in all, it was just one of the best days wildlife photography if I've ever had, I think actually, it was just the perfect day. The weather was great, not very much wind, the light was good, it was at really high tide, so there was, you know, all the waders were up, and uh, there were so many photo opportunities. So yeah, I've had a cracking, I had a cracking uh, time there. Um, I didn't do any more pieces to camera while I was actually in Norfolk, because it was just too much wildlife photography to be done, to be honest. And also, by the end of the day, I was so tired. As I thought I'd just finish the video off here in my conservatory and just let you know how the whole day panned out. So uh, I know I've already said this once, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have enjoyed it, if you can consider subscribing to my channel, that'd be great. If you do subscribe, press that little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next video is uploaded. Uh, and if you can give it a like, that always helps the channel. So yeah, thanks very much for watching guys. Uh, bye for now and I will speak to you on my next video. So yeah, bye guys.
the knots were starting to uh, spread out on the mud flats because the tide was receding and then all of a sudden they all took to the sky again and started these you know murmation patterns and what happened is a, a peregrine falcon had come through and uh, the knots took to the sky uh, in order to you know protect themselves and that's why they flock like this and create these murmations or patterns in the sky it's to confuse predators because there isn't a single target anymore there's a whole heap of knots flying in formation and the predator can't pick out a single victim so it's a it's a way to you know keep themselves safe and um, and protect themselves from predators and it's it's you know from our point of view it creates this absolutely fantastic spectacle but from you know the, the wading birds point of view it's a survival strategy so and i think a very successful one actually